So how's the homeschool going, Kelly? How's the homeschooling going? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> um, how is the homeschooling going? I mean, sometimes it's going really well and sometimes it's a disaster. Probably the same as every parent up and down the land. As long as they're learning something, I'm trying not to get too stressed about it. Yeah. Just reading loads of books. The teachers have been great, actually. We're checking in with them. And I'm really lucky because I've got twins and so that they, they, they keep each other company. But the flip side of that is they're with each other 24 seven. Literally they mm -hmm. share a bedroom, they share a bath, <laughs> <laughs> they just it everything. They're just with each other all the time. So yeah. I mean, that, that can be, you know, when, when, when they're pinching each other and scratching each other, I've just got to remember it's abnormal to spend that amount of time with somebody. Yeah. Yeah, I guess like having all this time off school then, does it worry like, do you worry like it's kind of affecting them socially, not having that interaction with kids their own age? Because it's been like, it'll be like nearly a year by the time they probably go back to interact with kids. I know. It, they, they're going to they're gonna be, um, I keep saying this, funny little weirdos, <laughs> yeah. but I don't, <laughs> I don't really, really mean that. But, but yeah, it, it is, it's not right, is it? Part of mm. being a human being is having that, like you say, that social interaction and communication and having a pandemic's really highlighted that our need for each other, hasn't it? And it's mm -hmm. and it's really brought out the best and the worst, isn't it, this situation? The best is in Marcus Rashford, who should be Prime Minister, <laughs> and and the worst, which is the Prime Minister. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh no. Um yeah, I I, I obviously do worry about my kids but but my, mine are the lucky ones really it's the ones that don't that don't have parents in a, a, a situation where you know I work freelance so that I can have time so I've got really good quality time with my kids because I'm only working as an actor <laughs> no. um, but it's the it's the parents that don't have that is isn't it who are work are trying to work or you know people that don't have work and have got mental health issues and other things going on or or, or being terminally ill or, or, or whatever it is mm. it's really yeah it's tricky it's really tricky yeah but but yeah got to be got to be there for each other haven't we as much as possible well that's it well how have you been dealing with it like in yourself like have you had your ups and downs <laughs> over the year with it sort of emotionally mentally you know how, how have you been dealing with it all yeah of course what what i found really difficult about it is is that so in at the beginning of it last year my nan went into hospital to have a hip replacement and which was successful and then she caught COVID and she died the week later. Oh, wow. And we weren't able to go, go to her funeral. I was, wasn't able to, to spend time with my dad and give him a big cuddle and a kiss. And, and I didn't see him for weeks on end. And, and so that, that was very, you know, really like seeing, seeing you know, what, what actually is happening, like having a personal connect, connection to it like that. And so it really pisses me off when people aren't wearing face masks mm -hmm. and yeah. taking it seriously and, and I know that obviously loads and loads of people are and I know there's people exempt and all those things but it's a very real thing that is happening and mm -hmm. um and it's so so that's yes yeah, so there's been some real shit times de definitely yeah. and like we're saying about my you know kids not 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 being able to spend time with their friends and their teachers and their education mm -hmm. because some people are breaking the rules so that so that you know, <sighs> anyway yeah. and it's, 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 crazy, it's crazy when you think because you know i see it on whether it be my twitter or my facebook or whatever it is you, you get some people that just still don't believe it's real that that's the thing I know. and it's just like what who is benefiting from any of this like why would this not be a, like a real thing and yeah it's just this 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 weird pack of group that i think uh anti-everything a conspiracy everything like you know the fact that we as a race don't have it under control, I think people think, well, there must be more to it then. Like, how did, how did this happen? Because it's because so, it seems so crazy. Some people mm. just seem to refuse it completely. Well, no, no, it can't be real. This is just some kind of thing that they're putting on us. But yeah, it's crazy when you think all these people are dying. You know, I've known um, a couple of people, sort of acquaintances and people that I knew um, through friends and stuff that have died from it. And yeah, and you know, it's a very real thing. And uh, yeah, it, it's... Uh, 
crazy to think there are some people like that. It is. There's a there's a lady around the corner from us, and she went on um, a march down by um, Trafalgar Trafalgar Square. She went on a a demonstration, sorry, and yeah. because she doesn't believe in the face masks and she thinks it's all a conspiracy. And I was chatting, obviously at length, <laughs> 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 to, to try and understand what she's what 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 she was saying, but. Yeah, it's so, so, so polar different, po- polar different? No, it's not even yeah, real Polar real. opposites. Polar opposites. opposites. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool. We, we all knew what you meant. <laughs> oh, my poor kids. Honestly, the homeschooling with me saying crazy things like that. But, yeah. but yeah, there are people who, who don't believe it's yeah. real. And then, they're, you know, saying crazy things as well. You have people like Donald Trump that say, put your bleach and... <laughs> <laughs> He, he's he's got two more days, isn't he? And then he's out of them. But and Biden yeah. will, will be in. Mm-hmm. Thank God. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Little chink of light, isn't it? After all that. Yeah. Awful... Like, yeah. Obviously, it's great that Donald Trump's out. But like, I'm not even too sure with Biden. If I don't, he's a bit old, isn't he? He's like 80 years old. Yeah, but then look look at that wonderful woman whose name is just obviously just gone from my head now. Who he, he's going going to be his successor? Yeah. He's yeah. he's he's got that book yeah, out yeah. at. at at the moment i mean she's she's the the, the future really Kamala isn't Harris. she yeah, yeah, yeah. yes thank yes. you yeah. um yeah, she's great yeah yeah well I, I would have loved to like i don't know if she ever will but i would love to see michelle obama run like she would <gasps> she would win oh. hands down. wouldn't that be great like you know she just she comes across like even when she like when she was like the first lady she's cool she's yeah cool as fuck, but, she, but she? she was just so active wasn't she like when she was first lady she was going like you know she's she, Compared to like Trump's wife and stuff, hasn't really done it too much. You don't see this, but Michelle was like going out there, like going around schools, promoting healthy eating, fitness, and things like that. Um, the is it the Invictus Games that she was really mm-hmm. involved with in, in that when you know we had that go in, and yeah, so no, I'd love to see her if she decides to one day. Like, I bet she's someone that comes across so so like so elegant and so great but like i bet like if you diss her man she will fuck your shit up <laughs> she will go yeah of course she will go from yes we yeah. can to oh no you didn't like she she will open a can of whoop ass like i'm you, sure you, so you, elegant but <laughs> you've got to get her on this haven't you yeah i w- I watched over the weekend her the documentary becoming of uh that's all about her and like you say going to schools and going to youth clubs mm. and talking to people everyday people and it, and her her passion and her she's so genuine and that she's that real authenticity about her and it's just yeah. it's really gorgeous yeah <laughs> I, if you haven't seen it watch it it it's a great documentary yeah. and you come away from it feeling all just lovely yeah. inside. It's a shame. It's a, we never get that in this country ever. Like you, you, you never see someone like Boris Johnson or Michael Gove or yeah. But look at them. Or there, Matt there's Hancock, lots of like going down the youth clubs in Lewisham trying to talk. You don't see that. Didn't none of no sort of our. I MPs got to say, I like. would not want to see Matt Hancock. In fact, I would like to see him <laughs> and kick him in the shins, <laughs> or, or or Michael Gove. They they, they they are the polar opposites. There we go. They are the polar uh, opposites. But then yeah. you've got your Mar- your Marcus Rashfords mm-hmm. and trying to think who else is 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 really flying the flag of hope. But but he's the only one really that springs by him. But to, talking of Lewisham and um and Marcus Rashford, for instance, I work at um food bank in Lewisham every Monday and that makes me hopeful there's some amazing people there and who are real and making a difference and lots of young people and yeah I just think they're not they're obviously not the politicians it's the people (laughs) it's Mm -hmm. it's, it's all the other people isn't it yeah no that's it it's uh we don't have people in touch with reality well what's really going on in the country in charge which is a shame but I don't know whenever that will will change you know it's one of those uh things <laughs> but but maybe, maybe this pandemic will, will will do that people will will have had enough and mm. there needs to be a radical change in this country because there's been so much austerity and disappointment and lies and mm. then there needs to be a massive shift and if if this isn't the reason for people to vote and to make change i don't know what 
is mm-hmm. well, that's the <laughs> thing. It's glaringly just, obvious it's just why are people allowed to to lie and then just get away like you know i know people lie but like because people are like position in such high power and then mm-hmm. just be able to it just kind of gets overlooked wherever you know they just kind of go off like, I mean, David Cameron, he just kind of did a runner. <laughs> uh, Bor- Boris Johnson, you know, he's quite notorious for not telling the truth and it just kind of gets overlooked. Then Nigel Farage that was telling everyone all these falsities about what Brexit was. And, and then putting ha- on buses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it, then it happened that he just kind of go, okay, well, I'm just going to kind of go away now. Like, and not deal with, you know, the questions like, what do we do now that we've got Brexit? He didn't really want to be involved at that point. <laughs> it was almost like he knew that we probably could, wouldn't win. So it was almost like, well, I'm just going to make the noise and then hope that you see what happens and I think he was it's used to happen it's a tactic isn't it mm-hmm. like you just say make, making noise if you make noise and people will believe you and it's just mm-hmm. them blagging it isn't it oh well, yeah yeah we look at Donald Trump he said he was going to like throw Hillary Clinton in prison and all this when he was you know, <laughs> making all this noise about <laughs> walls and, and everything and uh bring back the jobs and the coal mines and none of that happened none of it happened it was no. just you know it was just this radical bravado yeah yeah just rubbish absolute rubbish yeah yeah but uh yeah i mean the news isn't always great to to watch do you watch the news quite a lot or is it, do you feel like sometimes it's best to not let it too much of it into your space because there's so much divide and stuff i know it's good to stay informed but like mm. i mean you watch it for a little while it's like brexit then it's covid then it's black lives matter then it's trump and it's just like oh and all the and obviously the black lives matter movement's great you know in terms of what it's caught you know you know the what it's caused and the reaction it's got but like I guess you know it's not always not nice seeing the uh, divide intentions and stuff and, and things like that but that we saw uh you know with statues and things like that and some of the some of the rioting I don't know yeah I think like I want to stay informed as much as possible and especially with with, with my kids the especially with the with the Black Lives Matter it, just talking to them about things at, at a young age and getting them to question things is really important. Um, but I did notice that, especially having the radio on and the COVID and 67,000 people have now died of COVID and mm-hmm. 80,000 people, it was really get, getting to them. And, and my son was beginning to have nightmares and uh, just he wasn't like you know, it's because they're five not really understanding what's going on not being able to process it and it became this big nightmarish thing in for them for him especially and so we just try not to have it on as much as as possible <laughs> we on the we never have it on um during the daytime on on tv because 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 things can really visual as well and and that's mm-hmm sometimes things wash over when you see something visual you know with guns as well and sh- shootings and explosions and mm. <laughs> it can be a bit uh, for, for for little ones to to like I say process and and understand and we try and talk through things as much as possible but mm. um yeah yeah it's a, it's a it's a double-edged sword isn't it you want to like you want to know about what's happening in the world but at the same time you've got to think about that they're not going to be putting out really loads of good news because it doesn't sell. <laughs> and mm-hmm. and um, also, they need to put out some just different. I, I saw what did I see the other day. I saw a new a news article about uh, a, a man that has cheated on his sort of sex robot wife with an object while she was in for repair. The world's just going. What a bitch! Yeah. What a bitch! <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, wow. the world's going mad, and I was just like, "What he's so he's says obviously you get these kind of sex robot things now or whatever." I didn't he, expect the conversation to go this way. <laughs> How did we go from Black Lives Matter to sex robots? I don't know. That's you, what you started get. it. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, but it's just like news like that. And I was just like, oh, well, it's, you know, it's, you know and I looked into it, I was like, what? He's married to this sex Of course you looked into yeah, it. Of course. I was just, well, I had to be like, well, you know, can you marry informed. these Informed. Yeah. I need to be informed about sex robots. Yeah. So. Well, well, this is, well, this was the thing. It was just like, wait, 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 wait. If you're making a sex robot, why does marriage have to happen? Well, what's this? It's like, he's, so he's married to this robot. I saw this brilliant documentary that was about this woman who married the Eiffel Tower. In fact, I think it's called The Woman Who Married the Eiffel Tower. You have yeah. to watch it. And yeah. it's an actual condition where people have relationships with object, objects. And she had a relationship with 
she was an archer with her bow and arrow, or maybe it was just her bow. And then she realized that she was in love with a fairground ride. And it is, um, this is in America. Oh yeah. And she, and she met up with a group of people who also had this condition, eight people. And it's, it's such a fascinating, that is your homework. You have, you have to watch this. I, I, I've definitely heard of the Eiffel Tower one and I've heard, um... So, someone I don't think they're married to, but has sexual has relationships, relationships. Yes. with trees. Someone that does that. I think that's in this country. Uh, but how that works, I haven't. <laughs> Am I intrigued to know? I don't know. I don't actually know. I'm not intrigued to know. But um, yeah, it's 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 strange when you see these news, and you wonder are they real or is it just people kind of doing a bit like the whole Jerry Springer kind of thing, like a bit of PR and a bit of pay attention to me, like. Uh, have you seen the one, the man that like he's married to his wife and he um he's he acts like a baby, so he has like a cot and like nappies and like she has to come and read my bedtime story. He's like a fully. Don't grown you do that? Don't you do oh, that? Is this, no? is, uh, okay, well this might explain why I'm not doing very well if I don't do it. Um, but, <laughs> no, yeah. I've not. I've not seen that. Although I think is it was it on Channel Four or something? Something like that, yeah. And um, yeah, he just he gets like. He plays and he has ten, temper tram, tantrums. He's forty years old, and his <laughs> oh wife's like God. his mum. Uh, yeah, really, really, really strange. Yeah, but social. Okay. I, I guess social media in general is just yeah. You have to kind of <laughs> take take what you see with a pinch of salt on social media sometimes, don't you? Oh, is, was it on social media that you saw this thing? Sorry. Well, it, I think there was a documentary about it, but I saw it on. Oh right, sort of okay. Facebook news feed, people sharing it. Um, Do you know what? I've never been on Facebook because when I was at EastEnders, we weren't allowed to have Facebook pages. Okay. And so I, I luckily I, I've never I've never had one. I've never been on I've never been on it. So I've, I've, I've yeah. So Facebook is. You've never been poked by someone on Facebook. I've never had a Facebook. I've never. It's something that it, that is not part of my life. Yeah, yeah. And no. I'm very grateful to EastEnders <laughs> because because I think yeah. it takes up a lot of people's time still. Oh yeah, it? And no, social it does. media yeah. And things yeah. and instead of living in the real world and everything becomes very small, doesn't it? Instead of very big. Obviously, mm. I really like Twitter every now and again and having a good stalk of, you know, Kylie Minogue or whoever. Mm. <laughs> yeah um, well, but on Facebook it's not reality isn't it people just kind of show you what they want you to see what they want to you to put you know but what that's they want everything to put out there. yeah that, that that's not just that is exclusive I mean, Instagram is all what what you want to what packages yourself isn't it it's not real it's just all it's filters and well I feel to their kids like some parents some mums sort of having their selfie with their baby and like, that that baby's face is filtered why I know. I, I I did see this funny thing though that I don't know if it was true. And I think I can't remember if it was on Facebook or not Facebook, uh, Twitter, and it was this woman, this young woman in Liverpool who had done um, eyebrows on her child, on her baby. Had put. What am I trying to say? You know, you just uh, dyed its eyebrows so it looked like Mr. Potato Head, this little baby. It's crazy. Look for it, look for it. <laughs> yeah, look for it. Eyebrows child. I'll just type that in. Eyebrows baby Liverpool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's like whatever, it's, it's kind of like whatever you put out, like whatever you decide to put out on social media, you've got to be, uh, a, it's almost like you can't put anything else unless you really want to be held accountable for anything that you put out. Yeah, you know, so I think some mm. people kind of, uh, people that are perhaps a bit vulnerable sometimes will, you know, I look on Facebook and or Twitter sometimes, I'm like, oh, this person shouldn't be on social media because mm. they're, you know, if they've had a bad day, you know, they're tweeting, tweeting on Facebook and about how depressed they are, how, you know, how bad they're feeling. You know, it's, I mean, it's good to be open, but to kind of share it so publicly, mm -hmm. sharing that you're vulnerable and you're feeling a bit overwhelmed, I think it's a quite dangerous thing. And People that share opinions, obviously, and there's lots of. I mean, Donald Trump's got his Twitter deleted now. About yeah, time, good. I guess. About time, yeah. Because yeah, I think that, like I said, I think Donald Trump's sort of tweet, hitting where it hurts. Yeah, and they filter through to people that support him. Yeah, you know, think that they are able to. Yeah, it's a very like, dangerous tool, isn't it? Talk like that, yeah. When you've got megalomaniacs like that yeah. putting out hate and nasty mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. But then on the flip side, for instance, um, a work quite closely with a brilliant charity called Anti Nolan who try and get um, stem cell transplants for people with blood cancer. It's a great tool for trying to reach people and uh, targeting particular communities to try and 
um, <laughs> donate their stem cells and mm -hmm. and social media is obviously it's free and they can reach such a massive amount of people so that's a really good thing that that social media can that it, it seems like a quite a decent thing i know they're probably yeah, few and far mean. between but it can be a really good useful tool yeah sometimes um, just, just don't read the comments i think that's a lot of it the people that comment on things that's i mean i remember, I remember i think i've said once before um you know what have you if somebody said something to you then oh well no, 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 i mean a couple a couple of things like a couple of things that you can't just laugh about but i think the one thing where i got really was uh, i wrote an article about at mcpartland when mm. um you know it, it, it got published and i, I shared it on facebook and stuff and um you know sort of defended him not defending what he did you know when he had the you know the incident with the car and he was drink driving but to, you know people that were kind of calling for his head saying his television mm -hmm. career should be should be off and I sort of said no you know he needs to be treated accordingly you know get you know he didn't know thankfully no one did die or you know was seriously injured mm -hmm. um but you know he needs to be banned from driving you know have some time out go to rehab get what he needs to be sort himself out but then we should be able to Give them a second chance to to do things. I mean, you think of footballers that drink. You know, I won't mention anyone's names, but but there's some footballers that have had a couple. Go on. Of, yeah. Mention names. <laughs> a few, well, you know, a, a few a few car a, a few areas of uh, <laughs> drink driving and on that. But um, yeah, but with Ant for whatever reason, people just really were going on at him. And anyway, I wrote this article and the comments that I got from people that I think just don't like Ant and Deck for whatever reason. Because um, they're successful. Well, yeah, you know, just were just like like really sending really horrible comments about like it got really dark actually some of the comments but it was just like wow like, yeah, but people are horrible it's, yeah. it's, it's part you know, people are the worst that's why this planet's dying mm -hmm. <laughs> because we're, we're just it, it hasn't really changed but from from when there used to be public hangings and stonings and mm. all those it's we're still there's still that mentality isn't there that bloodthirsty Eh, nasty like kick a man when they're down or woman when they're down and mm -hmm. just that jealousy and it's all those parts of, of being a human that comes to the surface doesn't it sometimes mm. um we haven't really changed developed much from <laughs> yeah have you ever to deal, deal with anything like that like you know whether it be I guess when you're like in EastEnders or, you know, re anytime recently or, you know, wh whether you've been dating or anything like that, like where you've been kind of, you know, felt like you know, the media or I guess there wasn't too much. So was, was, there, was, there, was there Facebook when you were in EastEnders? I'm trying to think how many years ago that was. Yeah, I that's guess what it, I'm oh, saying. Oh, yeah, that's what oh, you said. Well, you went oh, on oh, it, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, but yeah, um, <laughs> it mean, wasn't that long ago. It wasn't. It wasn't. Yeah, like I'm trying to think. Yeah. Well, I know you, you know when you have like MySpace and Bieber. I was like, was that sort of? Uh, oh yeah, MySpace. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't sure if it was. But but then. what I did have when I was on it. So I so I was I started my first day on it was in 2005, and I left mm. 2008, and then went back in 2012. But all, all of when when I was on it, it was it was the heyday of all those magazines. It was the the Heat magazine. The mm new and it was there was closer and all those things and and the columns and pictures and it was there was all all that and the fat shaming and yeah and I, I think it's very easy to forget that they're well that I was I was very I was very young I was 21 when I started and and I wasn't emotionally uh, mature enough to 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 deal with when so when someone's somebody who I didn't know put put you in a magazine and says horrible things, and I I, I found that very difficult. Um, not that it happened like loads and loads, but it did happen. But now I'm older and I, I couldn't give a shit I just, about what some random says about me because I've got because I'm older. <laughs> I don't mm. care. I've got my family and I've got my head screwed on, and I realise that things are more important. And I think again, I have this pandemic. You realise people are dying. Things are more important than somebody saying you look fat in a yellow dress in Closer magazine. It just does mm. give a shit. <laughs> but um, when you're younger, and yeah, it does. It does fuck with your head. Of course, it does. Yeah. Um, Do you worry yeah. about like I guess teenage girls, young girls now that are on social media, they feel like, you know... Yeah, of course. I worry about my they're, daughter. They're, they're worry... Comparing themselves to everyone, aren't they? I guess there's, you know, 
you know, if they anyone that they sort of want to follow or feel like they're influenced by, they kind of see a picture of them on Instagram and think, like, I have to look like that because that's reality when it's not. And it, you know, it really sends up the wrong message, doesn't it? Yeah, and also it's, it shouldn't all be about what you look like, should it? You should be comfortable mm. with who you are as a person. Yeah. That's that's the most important thing, isn't it? Is you know, you could look beautiful, but if you're a cunt, then <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah, no, absolutely. Sorry. No, Sorry. no, it's no, it's fine. I'll go for it. <laughs> Drop all the sea bombs you want. Um, so anyway, how how many guests we spoke about EastEnders? How was your your time on EastEnders? I mean, obviously we had the the sad news about Barbara Windsor um, that, that passed away. Um, but I guess you know. She was your mentor, wasn't she, on EastEnders when you started? I guess you had quite a close relationship with her. Yeah, really close. I've been, been she's been a very inspirational part of my life, and we've become, became friends. We've been friends for 17, 18 years. And I, <clears throat> I'm going to really miss her because, because she was just a fucking legend. <laughs> and, and, and just not to, to have her there. Every time we used to go into town for a, an audition, I would swing by hers afterwards or beforehand for a cup of tea or a little gossip or she'd test me on my lines or whatever, and it's whatever, you know, whatever it was. So, and just not having that anymore. But then Scott, her husband, um, I'm really good friends with him. So I can obviously still see him and, and everything. And, <clears throat> But yeah, dementia is just such a, a cruel, cruel disease. Mm. I'm, I'm glad that, it's, that she's free from it now because it. You probably have people in your life that 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 you know who are mm -hmm. living with it or die from it or whatever. It's just it just robs you of so of so much. Not just your memory, but your life and your livelihood. And oh, I don't know. I've, I've said this before, but I think there's something extra, extra cruel when you're an actor and you have have your memory taken because your memory is everything as an actor that's 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 what it is it's mm -hmm. so it's your memory um but be, because of being <clears throat> sorry because of um barbara i've i've i've, I've just learned so so much about um firstly that 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 charity um alzheimer's society that we ran the marathon for in her honor last year and so many people were just beyond um, gorgeous with sponsoring us. We, we, we raised just at our little group for our Barbara's, Barbara's Revolutionaries was £185,000. And then the charity as a whole got, what, got £4 million, which is fantastic because I think they're just five or six years off of finding a cure. Because at the moment, if you're diagnosed with dementia or Alzheimer's, there isn't anything that that can that can stop it and that's really scary but there is light at the end of the tunnel and it's something that the government should really invest in because there's going to be something like a million people just in this country alone living living with it for instance I, I went I went for a walk with um with my best mate at the weekend and she was saying that that somebody that we know her mum has has Alzheimer's dementia but she won't she won't um, acknowledge it and so her mum is still driving and she's still <laughs> she's pretending that it's not really really happening and we everyone knows it that that <sighs> and then how do you inter how do you intervene with that yeah T try try to she's tried to um not me she's tried to because but um yeah it's it's scary the thought that there's people driving and <laughs> yeah there is. yeah when they're, they're just so or doing jobs you know and, and yeah just trying to keep that they're trying to keep as much control in their life before you know it must be scary you know, for them as obviously as well and feeling, feeling like someone's trying to steal what's going on in your brain almost mm. you know and you know when they did robin williams autopsy they found out that he had you know dementia as well and they believe that's what caused the suicide you know um, because he like his wife says he was having delusions he was when he did his last uh seen night of the museum free in a documentary i watched all the document all the directors mm -hmm. and cast were kind of saying he just wasn't right he just wasn't there like we did free they did free night of the museum films and the third one they just came back and 
he just said he lost that spark and you know and he'd lost the kind of forget remembering lines and stuff and they said it took yeah. a lot of editing like which you know it took a lot of editing to kind of uh for, for robin to be able to come across okay on screen I need, I need to watch this documentary. What's it called yeah. again? Um, well, I've, I've watched quite a few, but the, 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 what, the newest one's called Robin's Wish. And it's yeah, really Wish. good. Robin's Wish on Amazon. I've watched it on. Um, but yeah, no, really, it was really, really good. And uh, just hearing how his wife was dealing with, with it as well. And uh, just not processing reality the, the same as everyone else was. Like he was getting paranoid and things like that. Just really, it's really sad, but, you know, also interesting to see how that brain works you know mm -hmm. you know how much do we, we do how much you know it's a magnificent thing brain and apparently we i can't remember how much percent of it we actually use but like it's, seven percent or something yeah yeah isn't it? and it's it, really yeah, small yeah it's a crazy it's just yeah it's an uh, amazing thing really when you think about it more yeah yeah of course <laughs> well speaking of Sorry, what I worked with it. I was just going to say that I, I worked with um michael gambon in a film called um king of thieves uh, a couple of years ago and I, I could see there that he, that he was struggling with, mm. with his lines and and just having try, him trying to to you know plow on and and you could just see that you know mm. yeah no it's uh, it's it's, I mean, it's difficult but um yeah so what, what, I mean when did you last get to see Barbara was it uh, um just before Covid or yeah yeah the, last year yeah last year before covid and it was lovely had a re we had a really brilliant time together um she was mad about my twins and they were mad about her mm -hmm. and um she playing with them and we were singing loads and she's she had, she's got this massive this massive teddy bear that was in that's in her house and they just love they love it so much so she's pl yeah playing and it was great. It was really nice the last time I saw her. She seemed very happy. Um, but I, because of obviously pandemic, lockdown and everything, I haven't, I didn't get, I didn't see her for, mm. yeah, in, since since then. And then, and then of course now she's no longer with us, but then what an amazing mark that she's left. Mm. She's just left so much, not just as an actor, but as a human being as well and to be an actor is one thing but to be a dame <laughs> to be an icon everyone knows who barbara windsor is it's it's some feat and this woman from the east end of london who people thought she wouldn't amount to much and what an amazing career and she really was proper showbiz and had the time of day for everybody she was and very genuine with it and i, le I learned so much from her and um yeah yeah <laughs> and do you, amazing how, how was your time on eastenders as, a, as an actor like you said you're were, you were 21 years old was there any kind of like did you have like a favorite moment that you were involved in this show a favorite scene <laughs> or storyline where you're like yeah i'm really you know really into this yeah that there's what, where, what eastenders and soaps are great at is, is when Obviously, they're very current, aren't, aren't they? Mm. And they can deal with things straight away. Like, for instance, even now that they've, they've done about the, the, the pandemic's been part of Warford. Mm. It's, it's so, so current. I love that about it. And when they write for the writers, it is the best. It really is. But because it is quite a big car, sometimes you are sitting around, you know, in the back of cafe and just drinking a cup of tea and you, you, you're gagging to get your teeth into some proper, proper acting. Um, I mean, I, I, I did, I, le I learned so much there just because they shoot on multi cameras. And um, so I just, I just learned lots about like technical stuff that was great. But in term, terms of storylines that I really loved, I really loved, this is because I'm being all smutty, but I really mm. loved, um, I had a bit of a ding dong with them, um, with um, Martin Fowler in Arthur's Shed. Um, right. <laughs> so that was that, that was, was really funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just surreal, just really strange. I loved that, and I loved. So Linda Henry played my mum, and I love working with her because she's such a fierce actress. And there's there's a, a scene where I had to say we're always not you know not really getting on that that working class mother mm. thing about about my character Carly and. And uh, 
And anyway, it was her character. And we had this big old slanging match. And obviously, you're not allowed to properly spit in people's faces. As, of course, yeah. So, so, I had, so I had to flick some KY jelly um, into her <laughs> face that was on the end of a paintbrush. And it was just, we were crying with laughter. I got this KY having to throw it at Linda's face. It's so funny. And, and Phil Daniels played my dad in it. And mm. they used to have great time with him. Amazing conversations. I love football. I'm a massive Crystal Palace fan and um, he's a big Chelsea fan. He's having good, good old chats about... Yeah. banter, yeah. But, yeah about, and he's just funny and I, did, I had some really lovely times there and Pam St. Clement as well. She played my, my grandma in it and I'm still really good friends with Pam. Um, yeah, really good times. When it was good, it was really, really good and then when I didn't have much to do, I was a little bit like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, has has a return ever been on the been on the cards at all? Because like I said, I was I was shocked to see you not come back in the whole um <laughs> your brother was called Dean, wasn't it? Dean. Dino, yeah. Dino, yeah. Yesterday. And um yeah, when he had the storyline um with I'm trying to remember characters' names now, so I'm gonna say the actors' <laughs> names. But, um but Oh don't ask me. I'm um Danny sure. Dyer's wife. Um Oh I know, know. oh yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Ke- great, Kelly Bright. Kelly, yeah, Kelly, yeah, Kelly and Ron- yeah, oh, nice. yeah, but I can't remember what the character's name is now. She plays a character called Linda. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. So yeah, obviously there was that storyline between the two of them and the family, and it just felt like it was a really nice moment for you to come in, sort of like back up your brother, you know, because obviously he was denying everything that happened. But yeah, it was, you know, I just wondered if it was ever been on the cards for you to return. You know, there's, there's that thing, isn't there, about people always say, never say never. I mean, obviously, yeah. if there's a really juicy, amazing storyline, I'd never turn my nose up at it because mm. it's a great place to work and loads of my mates are there now Lou Stanley amazing mm. actress who plays Karen and um, Emma Barton I, I probably wouldn't get any work done because I love them <laughs> so much but the, what one one of the things about East End is it, is it opened up other doors for me and so the job that I'm that I've been doing for the past three years which is called In the Long Run mm-hmm. which is also set in the East End um, that is something that I really love filming and in an ideal world I would like that to um, continue mm-hmm. <laughs> and that, that's, that's what I would really like to see. I mean I, lo- I love EastEnders but I feel like I've possibly d- done tick that box and yeah. what I want to do now is, is more more of in the long run because like, it's comedy mm. and it's there's nothing else like it on on tv it's, it's got the only black family at at this at the center there isn't there isn't there isn't any other show where it has that and it's it's political but in a really clever funny way and it's set in the 80s so i get to have a poem um i get to work with idris elba and bill baby plays my husband i just i have so much fun on that show yeah well let's talk um, about it. let's talk about it let's talk about it in the long run because I've seen the new series it's uh yeah I've really enjoyed Yay. it really great. and uh, obviously I think firstly you know obviously Bill Bailey plays your on-screen husband I mean how I how, how how happy were you were you for him <laughs> seeing him on Strictly doing, doing all that I went Strictly nuts <laughs> <laughs> I, I cried when he won I was so pleased yeah just I like so I've mentioned it before about the whole rag, not rags to, well, yeah, not rags to riches, but I mean like the underdog thing. Mm-hmm. But, and he he was the underdog. They wanted him to be the buffoon and, you know, be being fired out of a cannon. Yeah. In yeah, and Whittacombe, like she did it, didn't she? Like, like, yeah. Yeah. And to be the joke, but actually yeah. he was, he just, he just wanted to learn and he did it with grace and intelligence and, I just I, and I just really saw him blossom and love it, and he's such a wonderful person. So so for him to win was just was just great. And Paul, in fact, when when he um Paul's my daughter, when he got offered to do Strictly, Bill phoned Pearl up and said, "What do you think? Do you think I should I should do this? I'm not mm-hmm. I'm not sure if, if if I should." And Pearl was like, "Yes, Bill, you definitely definitely should do it." <laughs> and he sent a really nice message to her when when he won. But thank you so much for telling me I should do this. And yeah. she was buzzing about it. She was really excited. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah. So, so how did the role for you in, for in the long run come about playing Bill Bailey's wife? Um, so, 
years okay years, years and years ago mm-hmm. i had to go and pick up an award for eastenders and it was <laughs> and it was called the the rose that the golden rose award or something for best continuing drama and i went along with barbara and we it was at this zhuzhi event and uh there was loads of free champagne there and i remember having a few glasses (laughs) (laughs) and i got chatting to charlie hansen who's a film producer and he has he works very closely with ricky gervais Mm -hmm. and then i got offered a part in extras when i was filming eastenders and it was to the david bowie um scene it's to play one of the girls with the with david bowie yeah and i begged them to do it please can i go off and, and do this scene and it literally it'd be one day and they're like no we're sorry we can't release you because if we release you for this it means that other people will want to go off and do other projects and mm. and i was so gutted and i'm still gutted about it <laughs> <laughs> um and i just kept in touch with charlie and then I ended up, when I left EastEnders, I went and did a, um, a series with, that he was doing with Jimmy Nail called uh, Parents of the Band. And I played a Sony exec. Um, anyway, that, that was, so I ended up working with him on that and keeping in touch. And, um, and, then, and, then, and then he got in touch and said um, that, that, they're, that they're filming this thing and, and that they're looking for the wife of, of Bill Bailey. I said, please, can I just go, go on? tape for you and and just just see if it would if if it works and and then they got me in yeah a few times and eventually I managed to twist their arm that that I could play his wife that it's worked really it works really well the the chemistry between the characters and um yeah I'm I, it's, I'm very grateful to Green Green Door and Idris and for giving me the, the opportunity to play this part because it's it's fun <laughs> yeah and the, the, the new series is great it's, it's really fun I mean I don't want to spoil anything but yeah it's lots of lots of fun you know there's bits where Bill's kind of having a worries about his health the character <laughs> and that's yeah. that that's the way that was always very funny and uh yeah, there was the moment with the an awkward date where the parent, both the mums come on this date with. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's awkward. Date. It makes you think about awkward dates that, I, that I've had before, and you think, oh yeah, I've been oh there. yeah, go on. Oh, there's oh, there's we could be we, we could do another episode about it. I'm trying to think of the worst. Okay, let's be. Let me think of um, the ones that stick out. Okay. <laughs> okay so you don't have to but go on no I no no. <laughs> uh, no no i had one date in Covent garden and um mm-hmm. yeah and she was nice we been talking for a little bit and yeah but she kept she was an actress and she kept clicking her fingers all the time what at this stuff no at, at me just like if she was kind of, well she was just kind of like she the best way i could describe what, to get your is, attention to be, no to... It, it, she would kind of click her fingers to almost like as an explanation point or comma the kind of and that's the way wow. it is and, da, 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 and, da, 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 and that's what I mean and yes yes <laughs> and uh, yeah it just got, got she a musical theatre actress <laughs> yeah well the thing but I wondered if she was on so because also her eyes didn't look like they were ever blinking when I was talking it was I, I remember like as I was talking and just look at her eyes and they weren't blinking just massive eyes and I didn't get them in or something well I was thinking there's something strange here so that that was one and then and then I had another <laughs> and uh <laughs> And yeah, once you notice something, you can't not notice it, can yeah, you? Yeah, that's the and thing. It drives you mad. Yeah, that's the I thing. I hate tapping. Tapping, I really can't stand. Yeah. Then, then I had a date with someone who was a couple of years older than me, and uh, again, it's the same, the same bar in Covent Garden, actually. So I don't know if I'm. Oh, well, you've got a go-to anymore. bar, have you? Well, yeah, usually, but I don't think I'm going to have to change it now because I'm having bad experiences. Um, but yeah, no, no. So about twenty minutes into the first date, hadn't even finished our first drink, she says to me. So if things worked out with us, when would you want children? Oh. 20, 20 minutes into the first date. That's like, what? Did your willy shrivel up? <laughs> Did it, <laughs> Every, everything shriveled up. <laughs> like I had like, the alarm go off in my head, like warning, warning, warning. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was, uh, yeah, that was a bit much. And then, and then, but then I tried to sort of like, I was like, made a joke out of it. Like, oh, you don't mess around, do you? Like, you know, it's just enjoy our first drink. What's your name again? Sort of made a joke out of it. And um <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, then she just kept bringing it up, like about having children, 
And I was just like, oh yeah, this is scary. I think like she just wants someone to get her pregnant rather than Yeah, date. it sounds it. Yeah, so yeah, so it just made me think of some awkward day. But back to in the long run. <laughs> but, <laughs> That's it, made, good. It, it made me think of some <laughs> awkward day. Have you ever had like a really before you obviously got married and children? Like yeah, did you I, ever... I I've been with my husband since I was since I was twenty one. So we've been oh, together okay. for so long that no, I don't no. I <laughs> no, I, I've, I'm, I've locked out. With, I don't have to have to do the whole is it Tinder and grinder. Oh, well, I'm not a grinder, but I know people. Well, that, I'm sure plenty it's of fish and, and all of that. Yeah, I, I, I do hear from my friends some some funny stories though. Yeah, about dating. My my friend Emma Noakes is hilarious with her dating stories. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It's a very different world, isn't it, nowadays? Especially now. Especially now. I mean, how do you date people oh, yeah. when you're in, a, in I mean, a pandemic? I mean, yeah, it's all, everything's kind of done online, isn't it? It's like the days of kind of going up to someone in the bar and being like, "Hey, you come in." <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I do, by the way. Uh, <laughs> um, That's but uh, but uh, those days are kind of gone. It's almost like no, you have to like a photo and then message to see if you get a message back uh, yeah it's like you know there's no like nice <laughs> stories anymore about how people sort of date and meet the change though now, now that when we when eventually i guess spring summer when people are vaccinated everyone will be going out to bars and drinking in clubs maybe there's going to be a renaissance in in how people used to meet in the olden days like a, or it could be a, the other way and be like a massive orgy or something Oh, <laughs> <Do you reckon? laughs> sign me up! <laughs> Do you think? I, I wouldn't surprise me. Like, if you know, some people have got a year without having a bit of fun. Mm. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, sex it, dolls, orgies. Oh yes, I mean, we, we, you cover it all with me. Uh, so I mean. <laughs> Lockdown we'll, we'll, has really yes, jaded you. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, back to in the long run again. Um, <laughs> it does kind of have that, you know, family only falls on the horses kind of vibe. I wouldn't say parents yeah. only falls on the horses, but it's kind of got that sort of, you know, night. It's like a nice, easy watch. Like you can just, you know, it is what it is. You know, it is uh, what it is. You know, it explains itself while you're watching it. And it's just, yeah, like a really, really nice sort of uh, real characters, I guess. You kind of feel like you can relate to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Def- definitely, and it's set set in a state like Only Falls was. It's mm. very working class, and like you said just then, like um, characters that that there's authenticity about them, and that's, it. Yeah, that's what real, I was looking for, and a realness about them, and yeah. it's about friendship and family, and and yeah, I, I, it's a really warm show. Mm. to watch I know I'm completely biased because but even if I wasn't in it I would still watch it because it's just it's just it's a little bit of joy <laughs> and yeah. I think it's, it's what we need at the moment is... yeah it's something that you need to watch it like a really good watch at the minute I think because yeah it does kind of give you like oh it's that sense of community that no one's feeling at the minute because we're not allowed to do it <laughs> yeah. um yeah yeah but no even, even like some of the um uh little hall meet like meetings that you have in the hall and stuff it's like they're mm. not they're not six meters apart what's going on <laughs> uh yeah and uh, no, that's yeah. what i thought when i saw the michelle obama the, the, the becoming is those great big stadium tours that she was mm. doing going to chicago and there being thousands and thousands of people and you think wow we're, we're so far removed from from that now and yeah 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 no, it's, it's great, crazy. I mean, what were your favourite comedies when you were sort of young or? Oh, Only up? Fools and Horses definitely yeah. was my absolute. I love it, it oh, now. I love it. I'm like a super always fan. watching on Dave. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, my brother loves it as well. Only Fools. We, we went to see actually. Um, this, this is a funny story. Okay, so we 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 went to see Only Fools and Horses the the play. Yeah, I haven't seen Bill, this yet because I'm a bit it's worried. Brilliant. Oh, is it good? But Bill's said I've got you some tickets. It's for me, my my brother and his missus and says so four of us anyway and we're going, going on to watch it. It, it it is really fun Paul Whitehouse is just oh, a treat mm-hmm. he play he plays Uncle Albert and Grandad mm. and it, it's just it's just fantastic 
But I, I thought that the, the tickets were free because I just thought, <laughs> who am I? I just thought they were free. And I got to box office and they were £360. And <laughs> I was just like, oh, shit. And of course, I, pay, I paid for them because my brother was like, I don't have the money, Cal. Like, Sorry, yeah. But it's fine, it's fine. I'll pay, I'll pay, it's fine. But it was really, really expensive because kids, because they were like front front yeah. uh, seats of the stalls yeah. Yeah. on this on a Saturday night, and I just scared yeah, got it into my head that they'd be afraid. Of it. it was it was an expensive night that was. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know, I haven't, I haven't seen them. I saw, I saw them perform a bit on a show, and I was just like, oh, I, I don't know. Can you, you know? without the real actors, without David Jason and without the real trigger. But, you know, I was a bit like, oh, I don't know if I should go and see it or not. And I don't If you do, it, don't pay. <laughs> don't pay 360 dollar. quid. Go to the half price ticket booth in Leicester Square and get yourself <laughs> a ticket from there. <laughs> and okay. go on a Monday. <laughs> and go on a Monday, um, yeah. Yeah, no, that's... Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, Only Four Horses, just a great show. Uh and I love Sally Forever at the moment, the Julia Davis that's oh, completely filth. Oh, you have to have to watch that. It's so wrong, but so right. <laughs> and I love her as a writer and performer. Everything that she does. And then the Kirby Enthusiasm, that's that's got us through lockdown. Yeah. Do you watch yeah. that? Yeah, I've seen that, yeah. Yeah. And then and there's there's some shows as well that you kind of wonder, well, would they be allowed to be on anymore like Little Britain and Oh I mean, God, yeah, it's not yeah. dated well, that has it? No, no, not at all. Like some of it, I could still laugh at, but I watched it back, and I was just like, "Wow, this was okay when I was a teenager, <laughs> like whenever it was." Um, but yeah, like some of the stuff is very in your wrong. face. Yeah, just wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just not. It's not funny, and it's not right. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but then you, you know, did you were you in between as fan? Did you watch in between? Yeah, I love the in between. Oh yeah, I love it. Yeah. See, some people think that that's a bit much, but I was like, oh no, it's like what sixth form is for a, it's, it's real. Like it's you know what the lads go through when you're in a sixth form or year eleven, whatever it was. I love the the first film of when when they go to Spain. Yeah. Is it Spain or is it the second one they go to Spain? They go no, to no, escape... the second one they go to Australia, didn't they? Yeah. Oh yeah, that wasn't as good, but the first. <laughs> But but yeah, the, that film was was really funny. I love I loved it. Yeah. I love Blake Morris. Blake Morrison is that what he called? Blake. Blake. The, uh, Blake Harrison. Blake Harrison. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I think he's fantastic. Yeah. I'm, I'm I, I saw him in that in in recently in that Kate and Koji that my friend Jimmy's in, Jimmy Akinbola, and he's he's brilliant in that. He's he's such a good actor. I think. Yeah. Yeah, and I love Jay. Jay in between is just the, the bullshit that. Yeah, cool. He's a Palace fan. <laughs> <laughs> well, we went to talk about Palace's result uh, yesterday. Oh we? God, four 0 Yeah, well, Newcastle. So we're playing tonight. It won't be much. Mm. Won't be much better than that. Um, but anyway, you, I mean, you briefly mentioned it your time on the, uh, you know, the extras. But I know you did the Office as well, which I, I watched well, I fairly didn't recently. Do it. I didn't. I wasn't allowed to. I do know, but you did the Office, the Office Christmas special. Oh, I did that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you did that, yeah. And um, so you did, you know, work with Ricky Gervais a little bit in that scene. And really, was it hard to sort of keep a straight face? I know you had to be careful, you know, <laughs> not too many takes, but, you know, it was very, very funny. It was, you know. Yeah, it was, it's one of my favourite jobs, that. I loved yeah. it so much. Because it, because it came at the end of the Christmas specials. Hmm. I'd, I'd watched, obviously, the, the two series bef before that. And absolutely loved it. And, and so many people, I remember back then, still weren't quite sure if it was a documentary or not, if it mm. was real or not. I mean, there'd been lots of talk about it. And my, my dad loved, loves it and he watches it all now still. And so when I got that job, I was just so excited to tell my dad that, I'd, that I'm going to be working on The Office. Uh, yes, yeah, so I wanted to be proud of me. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so you think R Ricky and Stephen are geniuses mm -hmm. and I really I, I like his his stuff now as well the um, the afterlife, I afterlife really, yeah I've seen the first series I haven't seen the rest really like of it. the first series yeah it's really yeah. clever and yeah, yeah I'd love it's, to work with him again yeah, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna put it out there put 2021 it out there. come on put it, out, put it out there in the universe yeah after afterlife or but yeah I, you know I think 
it'd be great for him to see. I'd love to see more David Brent, but I don't know if he's kind of closed that. Oh, I don't know. Shot. I reckon he. I reckon he probably want to do it, do a little bit more. Yeah, because the film was great. The Life on the Road. That was fun. yeah. Yeah, um, but yeah, it'd be great to see what David Brent, even if it's not in an office, just something Brent's doing. Like, you see him like running, running for like Slough MP or something, got like, vote for Brent, or you know, something ridiculous. That's, that that's, a, that's a really good idea. Yeah, yeah, and just like because no one, no one really votes for the MP; they vote for what party they're in. So like David Brent could literally become an MP on a technicality because of what party he's in and what part of the country, and just mm-hmm. like Brent, just like in the House of Commons, <laughs> like. You, you, you need to send an email to Ricky and say, I've got yeah. this idea. I've got this idea. David Brent becomes MP for Slough to like make it happen because throw money at I, it. That's, that's got legs that has. And then you could be <laughs> in it and I can be in it. Yeah, we should. Yeah, we'll kind of be his um, MP mates, the ones that, you know. <laughs> we could go and, go and do that, that, um, that door stopping stuff, the canvassing. Yeah. We could yeah. do the canvassing for him. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Sorted. <laughs> yeah, yeah, brilliant. <laughs> um, so, I mean, how are your parents over been over Zoom? Because you haven't seen them. Been at, you haven't seen them, have you? Over COVID, and have you seen them? Not really, not much. Yeah. Been been for some walks. Yeah, but but I haven't seen them loads. Mm-hmm. And also, I was I was I was really jammy that the the, the second lockdown, I, I missed it because I was in Guadeloupe filming. Uh, death in paradise <laughs> oh, yeah. so so i i yeah i was I, I i lucked out a little bit so yeah so i did so i did, didn't end up seeing my mom and dad for for a long time and even over, over christmas but yeah I, I've, I have had a it snowed last week where, where they live and my kids had never seen snow before so i wanted oh, wow. to see so where went for Went, went for a snowball fight up up by them oh, which was nice. which was really really nice and yeah. quite emotional when i haven't seen them for a long time yeah well it's good, good to know they're <laughs> doing okay have you been doing like any zoom quizzes with them oh my god we, we we've done a couple um but my dad i mean he he, he was um a football coach for crystal palace and football was always on in our house. It's, it's, not, it's always on the house 24-7. So basically all the, all the questions were, were, that, were like, who scored 76 <laughs> goals in 1986? When I was like, I don't know. I don't it's, not like, it's like a Gavin and Stacey episode. <laughs> if you see, uh, that Gavin and Stacey episode where Smithy's doing the pub quiz and every other answer is Gary Lineker. <laughs> 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 uh, but yeah who, who you interviewed yes who's been on the podcast Gary Lineker what a ledge yeah he was, he was really I couldn't believe how nice he was actually like you know I'm sure he's nice anyway but just overly friendly I was just not, not okay I'm digging a hole now not overly friendly in that kind of way but you know what I mean what? He, was, he was he was a very very nice man Gary Lineker yeah he, he comes he seems like that he would be he comes across isn't it doesn't it yeah, I yeah. I think it's the the first other other than interviewing you, of course. Um, he's been. But he never got favorite. booked. Is isn't isn't he one of the? He never got booked when he was a football player. So I think he's yeah. He could be well be yeah yeah. Definitely that, that that's something I've learned in a pub in, in a family in a pub quiz. quiz. Oh, okay. But so he's got to be nice. I mean that is some feat, isn't it, to be, play at yeah. that level and yeah. to never be booked? Yeah. There can't be that many players, really. Hmm. No, yeah, absolutely, yeah. He, he, I mean, he was just really, you know, really honest about, like, even the money that he was on as a footballer. He was just like, I know it's ridiculous. Like he said in the podcast, he was just like, I can't justify my wage to someone that's a nurse on the front line now. I can't justify it, but it's just the way the world is, and I'm not going to sort of say no. Like, I'm not going to, like, turn no, the money all down. But he's just, no, he's just like, you know, he said footballers and stuff, you know, get a lot. But it's what you do with your money, isn't it? And it's what you do with your yeah. voice and, your, mm. and the platform that you have is somebody's in the public eye yeah and that and that's what's what is possible isn't it mm-hmm. Some somebody like that can can spread a lot of love and be paid a lot of money still yeah mm-hmm. yeah so when you did your zoom quiz did you have a week where you were kind of the host of it and you did, did you do you know, oh we it? didn't do many of them I just, oh, you didn't I mean, we didn't do many of them no no <laughs> okay yeah we know there were, there were, there were some, well we had like some fun rounds and stuff like i'll try one we'll try one now 
throw on with you now. Get your quiz head on. This is, oh, God. This is a fun round. So it's two truths and a lie. Okay. So you've got, I'm going to, I'll go first and you, then I'll see if I can okay. get yours. Okay, so I'm going to say two truths and one lie. You get three questions and you've got to try and find out which one's the lie. Okay, so the three are, I once, at 19 years old, I once played a munchkin in The Wizard of Oz. I've played a munchkin before in Wizard of Oz. <laughs> Number two, <laughs> I have a lucky shirt. Number three. Yeah. Um, on a lad's holiday, I had really bad sunstroke um, on, on a lad's holiday in Magaluf. And it, it was so bad that one day I had to kind of stay in bed on the ho holiday. But I was like hallucinating. So like um, I, I, I got up out of bed and started getting ready for school like I was going to school. And walked out of the hotel like, like I was going to school. It took me a while to realise where I was going. Mm. Okay, there you're free. You get three questions. L lucky shirt, I think, is the is the lie. You're not going to ask the three questions. What? You get three questions to ask me to try and <laughs> oh, to try and figure it out. But you you just seem convinced that my acting's awful, and you can tell which one it is. But um, I, think, I think it's lucky shirts. You don't you don't need the questions. No. Oh damn, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> All my shirts are lucky, Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> Is it really? Am I right? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, the other two were right. I once played. I did. Want, I did once play a munchkin. Um, yeah, I had to fill in for someone that no shade. Um, I had to be on because I'm six four. I have to get on my. I had to be on my, yeah, yeah. I had to get on my knees with these two girls at munchkins with the lollipop kid people. Oh my yeah, god! Yeah, so I looked ridiculous. And, um, and yeah, I did. I was on a lads holiday in Magaluf and there was one day where in the day I was just like not giving a shit about some cream and all that. I was like, oh, I'm fine, I'm fine. And then just like feeling like I was going to pass out. And then, um, yeah, in bed. <laughs> oh. and started, I was just really dehydrated. They were all out on the night for that night. And I was and I just got up, started getting ready, thinking I was walking to school. I'm like, wait, this ain't Oxfordshire. Wow. Yeah, very... Wow. Yeah, but you're right. <laughs> well, um, because second time round quizzes, it's, it's my brother's birthday coming up and he we're going to do a quiz for his birthday just so that we can all see each other. But there's a bloke that I work with called Alistair at the Food Bank and he's doing a Frey Bentos party on Zoom at, at, at the weekend uh, with a load of pies at about to go off date that we can't give out to people. So he's having a free <laughs> Bentos. Uh, oh, so nice. that sounds fun, doesn't it? I've never eaten one of them pies before. So. No, I haven't. <laughs> no. And nor shall I, because I won't be joining that party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, the, yeah. Thank God, really, for Zoom and things. We, we're lucky, aren't we? Can you imagine mm. not having that? Oh yeah, imagine having it's this, it's just like no internet and like the internet went out or the electric. We have, to, we have to talk to each other and then read books. I know, yeah. Imagine that. Read books. Well, have you thought about doing some writing in the future? Yeah, I write, I write. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I, I, yeah, it's something that getting older and I'm not one of those actors that, that moan, you know, you know, moans about... Uh, not not having the right part or I don't, I don't know but basically I, I want I want to no one's going to give me the the, the part of my dreams on, on a plate I realize mm. this so the only way forward is <laughs> is for me to to write something and also I want to work with my, my really good friends and people that I've met over the years that I really love and I want to work with again and writing I think would, would create that opportunity and especially like being being in lockdown and not having that creative input and doing a few self tapes in in a week doesn't really it's, it's not it's not enough for my creative juices but and I really love writing um and when I've been getting my kids to do like little little stories mm -hmm. it's made me me want to write stories as well and and I've got things to say I've got life experiences and yeah so basically yes I really want to do that that is something done that I am doing and want to get better at because it's, it, you know, it's hard, isn't, isn't it? To, I've got to learn. I've got to learn to write. Yeah, you'll do it. Well, you've, got, you've, well, you've worked with some incredible people as well <clears> to kind of learn 
to learn from I Idris Elba. Um, you know, I mean, he's uh, you know, I like the. He's the, a doer. He's a doer. Yeah, he's a doer. Yeah, he's, yeah, yeah. He's like the he's like the English Rock, isn't he? The Rock for he's like our version of the Rock. <laughs> he just seems yeah. to be doing everything. The Rock has his own tequila brand. Did you know this? No, I did not. But I, I love tequila. Yeah, so I, I've been thinking about ordering some. I'm thinking. I'm do gonna, it. Yeah, I think I'm going to do it. Um, yeah, he has his own the Rock of tequila. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> or go right. Or go right. <laughs> Exactly. Um, so I guess what are your, what's your, what are you hoping for for 2021? How, how are you kind of envisioning the year, hoping, you know, say the vaccine is all great and we're all out and about by Easter? <laughs> that's hopeful thinking, isn't it? I don't yeah. think that's going to happen. Sorry to put a dampen on that already. Yeah, so right. I, I reckon realistically the summer, mm -hmm. I, th I think... <laughs> yeah. What do I just? I just want. What do I want for this year? I just want people to be. That sounds cheesy, but but true. I want people to be happy. I want there to be a radical change in in the government. I want there to be uh, austerity sorted out and food parcels to be properly sorted as well. And mm -hmm. I want there to be people in government that give a shit. I want. Oh, it can only come from the top and filter down. I want the theatres to reopen again and people to have their jobs again. Mm -hmm. The arts is so important. That's something else about lockdown. It's so like we just brushed on it then, but entertainment, television, quizzes, theatre, it's all part of society that's really important. We need escapism. We need to be challenged. We need to be entertained. And, and it's such a massive industry and it brings in so much money into this country. It's something that we do really well. And for the BBC, to be saved i want people to vote for, for things and make change and realize that they have power and if we all come together that we can do good instead of just being lazy and just retweeting something is it enough to actually physically do something and make a change and make a difference have i'm having i'm hopeful for the for the future for this year that people have just had enough that they're going to actually do instead of sitting there saying instead of saying it fucking doing it yeah <laughs> and yeah, so yeah, I've, no. that that's what I have hoped for twenty twenty one. That sounds great. Yeah, I think. I oh. think yeah, I think. Um, and for David Brent to be, you know, running. Yes. Running. <laughs> we need. We need. You know, we need. We need. We need to put the David Brent MP idea out there as the right person. <laughs> David yeah. Brent MP of Slough, and just and then all be saved. Everything will be fine. It really yeah. would be fine again. Yeah. <laughs> I could just, you know, imagine like David Brett as MP talking and just being like, well, you know, people voted for me around here and people moaning at him in the background. <laughs> You're scum, you Tory bastard, or whatever, you know. Just <laughs> and, yeah, uh, yeah that'd, be, that'd be funny. Uh, but anyway, thank you so much, Kelly, for coming on. And um, oh, thank I'm you. Sure the best is yet to come. We'll look forward to seeing more of in the long run. I'm sure we're going to see more and um, look forward to see what you're going to be writing for us as well. Oh, yes. Thank you and Happy New Year. And yes, Happy yeah. New Year. Thank you very much. Lots of love.